In one of the postulates for quantum mechanics we talked about earlier, we said that the time evolution of the wave function, which describes the system, is governed by uh, the Schrodinger equation, or a variant of the Schrodinger equation. Here we're going to uh, say, we're talk about the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Now where does that come from? Well, the postulate was that I h bar how the wave function, which we'll now say is a uh, function of both position and time, how that wave function depends on time, that's equal to, let's use the Schrodinger, uh, the uh, Hamiltonian operator, h, which corresponds to total energy, times the uh, wave function of r and t. Now what we want to go from this equation is to an equation which gives us the time independent Schrodinger equation, which will give us wave, give us wave functions that are time independent, and these will be the so-called stationary states. And that's what we're going to focus on in this course. If we want to uh, study more about the time dependence, we can take a more advanced physical chemistry course, chemistry say 451, um, which is offered uh, next semester or next spring, next fall. All right, what we do here is a technique will be common is to separate variables. So here we have um, the wave function as a function of two variables. We're going to separate those into a f uh, function of just the position and then a function of just time. And that's okay as long as position and time are not very are not correlated. So let's make that assumption. If we put this in, uh, this now separated variables in for here. We'll have i h bar how the um, distance part of the wave function times the t time part of the wave function varies with time. That will be equal to this operator, this Hamiltonian operator, times um, the uh, distance part of the wave function times the time part of the wave function. Now we're going to make a further assumption that h, the operator here, is independent of time. In that case, um, we can pull out this spatial part of the wave function because it doesn't depend on time. So we just have i h bar, spatial part of the wave function, how the time part of the wave function varies with time. That's equal to these uh, times. We can pull that out. H doesn't depend on time times the operator operating on the spatial part of the wave function. Now let's collect all the terms that depend on R on one side of the equation and all the terms that depend on R on the other side of the equation. So this would be i h bar, we'll divide this by uh, the time dependence, and then on the other side of the equation we'll have the things that depend upon um, spatial parts of the wave function. Now just let me write this whole thing. 1 over of r, then this uh, function you get by operating the operator h on r. All right, so over here we have something that depends only on this variable and over on time, and over here we have something that only depends upon <coughs> uh, distance. So for these two things to be equal, both have to be equal to a constant, and let's call that constant E for energy. So now we have two separate equations. That's what we get when we separate variables. I h bar, 1 over the time dependent part of the wave function, how that varies with time, that's equal to E. And then we also have <clears throat> 1 over the spatial part of the wave function, and then we have this operator operating on the spatial part of the wave function. That's also equal to E. 
Uh, this has a uh, solution. Well, this, let's write it this way to make clear what the solution is. And I'll ignore now just keeping those. We'll recognize that this is time dependence. That's equal to e over i h bar times this function. This You can immediately write down the solution. This is uh, phi of t is e, because if you take the e, the x uh, e function, if you take the derivative of that, you give that back with whatever was in the uh, exponent. So this will be equal to e t divided by i h bar. So that's how the wave de time dependent part of the wave function varies with time. And if we just write this now, we have h psi, this is the function of r, is equal to e psi. So this is the, and this again is operator, this is the time independent uh, Schrodinger equation. And this then would be the time dependent. All right, Schrodinger equation. So we're not going to worry about the time dependence. So what we're going to look at in this course is the time independent Schrodinger equation. That's what that is, h psi equal e psi. And that came from one of the postulates of quantum mechanics, namely that the time evolution of the wave function, which describes the system, is given by this equation. We separated variables and made h, this operator, time independent. And from that, we get the time independent Schrodinger equation. So as we said, h is the Hamiltonian operator. And the Hamiltonian in classical physics corresponds to the total energy of the system. So we carry that notion over to quantum mechanics. So the Hamiltonian uh, is uh, the total, the operator corresponding to total energy of the system. And the total energy is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And E is the energy of the system and psi is the wave function. Again, since these, um, this is a time independent Schrodinger equation, the wave function does not depend on time. Therefore, we say the system is in a stationary state. So these wave functions that we get by solving the Schrodinger equation will be independent of time. They'll be stationary states. Okay, we also recognize if we, um, that this is called an eigenvalue equation. Now, an eigenvalue equation is uh, well, the Schrodinger equation, but uh, let's look at that in more detail. So we have an operator operating on some function, and that will give you the function back again. This is called an eigenvalue equation. So you get the function back again. These, this, these psi here are called eigenfunctions. And this E here is called an eigenvalue. And this whole equation, the Schrodinger equation, is called an eigenvalue equation. And uh, the functions that um, uh, satisfy this equation are called eigenfunctions. And those constants, this is a constant. That's called the eigenvalue. Operate on the eigenfunction, you get the eigenfunction back again times a constant, and that constant is an eigenvalue. Well, h is the operator corresponding to total energy. Therefore, this eigenvalue here will be the total energy. Now, in general, you can have more than one eigenfunction, and uh, which will satisfy this eigenvalue equation. And therefore, you can have more than one eigenvalue. Uh, and we'll find out in a little, little while that these different eigenfunctions and corresponding eigenvalues are distinguished by quantum numbers. Okay, so uh, E is the eigenvalue, Psi is the eigenfunction, and a lot of times we'll talk about eigenfunctions as wave functions, uh, so they're approximately equal. So what does it mean to solve Schrodinger's equation? To solve Schrodinger's equations, what you have to do is to find the eigenfunctions, okay, so find the psi, and the corresponding energies, or eigenvalues. All right, so 
in our study of quantum mechanics, typically we will try to be finding, given an operator, we'll be trying to find uh, the eigenfunctions of that operator and the corresponding eigenvalues.